Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Welcome to Trail Talk. I'm Edie. I'm really glad you decided to join us today. This is my friend Larry Benson. Larry is a great friend of the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. He serves on our board and uh, obviously he volunteered to come and read some books for us today. So we're just really glad that he's here. So um, Larry, I uh, think I may just go ahead and let you get going. I've got some things to tell the folks about at the end, but for now, I think we'll just get rolling with the stories. Perfect. All right. I hope you guys are all ready. We're going to have fun. Just uh, bear with me because I am not a very good reader. Oh, so anyway, I we're going to have some fun. I bet he's good. Everybody right, ready? Here we go. Have a seat. I'm going to get comfortable here. And we have two books. First one we're going to read is... Texas Zeke and the Longhorn. I don't know if you can see that, but that's Texas, Texas Zeke. Texas Zeke. Let me find my spot here. It's always best if you start at the very beginning. <laughs> One morning, old Texas cowboy named Zeke found a Spanish gold piece while working in his ranch. What can I do with this coin, he asked. Why, I'll ride into town, buy a longhorn steer, and when I get home, I'll eat a big old bowl of hot chili. Zeke bought the longhorn, herded him home, opened the gate to the corral. But you know what? He pushed and he pulled and he tugged and he shoved, but that steer wouldn't budge. Look at him trying to push that big old steer in the corral. <laughs> Zeke left the Longhorn and he rode for help. He met a border collie chewing on a bone. Zeke tipped his hat and said, Collie, collie, heard the steer. Steer won't go in the corral and I won't get home for chili, but the collie wouldn't herd the steer. As Zeke walked his pony, he saw a mesquite stick waving in the wind. He tipped his hat and said, stick, stick, poke the collie, collie won't herd the steer, steer won't go in the corral, and I won't get home for my hot bowl of chili. But you know what, that stick wouldn't poke the collie. Traveling along the trail, Zeke saw beans cooking on a campfire. He tipped his hat and said, fire, fire, burn that stick. The stick won't poke Collie. Collie won't herd the steer. Steer won't go in the corral, and I won't get home for my hot bowl of chili. But that fire wouldn't burn the stick. Zeke moseyed along the trail came upon a spring of water bubbling out of the ground. With the tip of his hat, he said, water, water, quench the fire. Fire won't burn the stick. Stick won't poke the collie. Collie won't herd the steer. Steer won't go in the corral. And I won't get home for my chili. But the water wouldn't quench the fire. Zeke trotted his pony alone long and he met a javelina digging acres and a javelina is a wild pig looking critter with big teeth he tipped his hat and said javelina javelina drink the water water won't quench the fire fire won't burn the stick stick won't poke the collie collie won't herd the steer the steer won't go in the corral and i'm not going to get home from my big old bowl of chili but the javelina wouldn't drink the water. Zeke then went on a ways and he spotted a burrow eating grass next to the trail. He tipped his hat and said, burrow, burrow, kick the javelina. The javelina won't drink water. Water won't quench the fire. Fire won't burn the stick. Stick won't poke the collie. Collie won't herd the steer. Steer won't go in the corral and I'm not gonna get home for my bowl of hot chili. But that burrow wouldn't kick the javelina. 
Can't wait to this next page. It's exciting. <laughs> Zeke spurred his pony along the trail, and he saw a prickly pear cactus growing in the sun. Tipping his hat, he said, Cactus, cactus, stick that burrow. Burrow won't kick the javelina. Javelina won't drink the water. Water won't quench the fire. Fire won't burn the stick. The stick won't poke the collie. The collie won't herd the steer. The steer won't go in the corral. And I'm not gonna get home for my chili. But the cactus wouldn't jab the burrow. Zeke rode further and he saw an armadillo digging a hole. Zeke tipped his hat and said, armadillo, armadillo, dig the cactus. The cactus won't jab the burrow. The burrow won't kick the javelina. Javelina won't drink the water. Water won't quench the fire. Fire won't burn the stick. Stick won't poke the collie. Collie won't herd the steer. Steer won't go in the corral. And he is not gonna get home for his hot bowl of chili. But the armadillo wouldn't dig the cactus. Zeke spied a young cow hand mooning over a pretty girl. He tipped his hat and said, cow hen, cow hen, chase that armadillo. The armadillo won't dig the cactus. The cactus won't jab the burrow. The burrow won't kick the javelina. The javelina won't kick, won't drink the water. I told you I wasn't a very good reader. I'm practicing. Water won't quench the fire. Fire won't burn stick. Stick won't poke collie. Collie won't herd steer. Steer won't go in the corral. And I won't get home for my hot bowl of chili. The cow hand said, see that pretty gal over there? If she'll give me a kiss, I'll chase that armadillo. Look at her on that horse. Is that not amazing? Zeke sided up to the pretty gal with the tip of his hat and said, gal, gal. Kiss the cow hen. Cow hen won't chase the armadillo. Armadillo won't dig cactus. Cactus won't jab burrow. Burrow won't kick the javelina. Javelina won't drink water. Water won't quench fire. Fire won't burn stick. Stick won't poke collie. Collie won't herd steer. Steer won't go in the corral. And I won't get home from my bowl of chili. What do y'all think's gonna happen? But the pretty gal wouldn't kiss the cow hen unless a mockingbird sang her a song. Zeke looked up, saw a mockingbird perched up in a cottonwood tree. He tipped his hat and he said, mockingbird, mockingbird, sing the gal a song. Gal won't kiss the cow hen. Cow hen won't chase armadillo. Armadillo won't dig the cactus. Cactus won't jab the burrow. Burrow won't kick the javelina. Javelina won't drink the water. Water won't quench the fire. Fire won't burn the stick. Stick won't poke the collie. Collie won't hurt the steer. Steer won't, steer won't go in the corral. And I bet you can guess, he's not, Zeke's not gonna get home for his hot bowl of chili. But the mockingbird said, Bring me a blue bonnet flower, and I'll sing the pretty gal a song. Zeke fetched the blue bonnet, gave it to the mockingbird, and galloped back to the longhorn. The mockingbird, mockingbird sang the pretty gal a song. Pretty gal kissed the cow hen. The cow hen chased the armadillo. The armadillo dug the cactus. The cactus jabbed the burrow. The burrow kicked the javelina. The javelina went and drank all the water. The water quenched the fire. The fire burned the stick. The stick poked the collie. And the collie herded the steer. The steer ran into the corral. Look at that. Everybody is happy there. 
And Zeke got home for a big old bowl of chili. The chili was so hot, Zeke ran to the well to get a tall, long, tall drink of water. He tipped his hat and said, Bucket, bucket, draw me a drink. But the bucket wouldn't draw him a drink. Zeke threw his hat on the ground and sat down on the porch and shouted, Doggone it, not again. End of story. <laughs> Could I interest you in another one? This one's the original cowgirl. And this is the wild adventures of Lucille Mulhall. And I'm told that this is after a real character. In the early 1900s, girls were expected to sew, cook, and be ladylike. Lucille Mulhall didn't give a lick about any of that. She loved swinging her lariat and riding the range. By the time she was in her teens, Lucille knew how to rope, cattle, break broncos, and even lasso a wolf. She wasn't afraid of getting hurt or of what other people thought about her. Soon she was thrilling the crowds at rodeos where she'd compete against men and win. The amazing true story of the fearless woman who broke records, defied society's expectations, and became known as the original cowgirl. And I'm thinking this may be the same cowgirl that kissed the cowboy and helped the cowboy help Zeke get his bowl of chili, to make a long story short. Okay, Lucille wasn't like most girls in the 1890s. Instead of skipping with her mama's clothesline, she twirled it like a lasso. Whoosh, whoosh, snap. Lucille would rope a fence post in three seconds flat. Lucille's papa, Colonel Zach Mohall, saw right away she could be a mighty fine ranch hand. But mama did not. Roping and riding were not ladylike. Lucille didn't care about sewing or cooking or becoming a lady. Ladies rode side saddle and riding side saddle was slower than a snail climbing a greased log. Lucille wore a split skirt and she rode astride just like the cowboys. By the time she was 10, Lucille was mending fences, training racehorses, and herding cattle. Lucille swung her lariat at jackrabbits and chickens. The family dogs had to watch their tails when Lucille was around. During the spring roundup, Lucille asked her papa, when can I have my own herd? When you're old enough to rope and brand your own cattle, he said. Colonel Mulhall soon discovered she already could. Look at those cattle there. They have LM for Lucille Mulholland branded on them. She's quite a cowgirl. Lucille's mama worried about her a lot. The pastures were filled with longhorns, wolves, and cows. So mean they could turn the strongest cowboy into buzzard food. Wild animals didn't scare Lucille. When a wolf was trying to chase her calves, she rode out to search for him. She spotted that vicious varmint eaten in the pasture and charged with her lariat swinging. Whoosh, whoosh, snap. The wolf put up a ferocious fight, but he was no match for Lucille. Look here how Lucille has roped that roof, that wolf, <laughs> roof, woof, with her lasso. The only thing that scared Lucille was not being able to ride and rope so she always hid her scrapes and bruises from her mama. One day she roped an unbroken horse in the pasture and it pulled her clear out of her saddle. Tangled up in the lariat, Lucille bounced behind the galloping horse. Finally, she cut herself free. Look at that horse dragging Lucille. That'd be scary. When Lucille was 13, her papa organized some rough riding and roping competitions for his cowboys. Lucky for Lucille, 
he invited her to come along. She stuck like a burr to her galloping pony, and with a gentle flick of her wrist, her rope sang for the crowd. Newspapers praised Lucille, the daring young girl who held the audience in a breathless spell and was the envy of half the men. Folks had never seen such a fearless cowgirl. But Mrs. Mulhall, Mama, decided it was time for Lucille to become a lady. She sent her to a boarding school in St. Louis. Sad and lonely, Lucille longed for her pony and the prairie. At the end of the term, her papa welcomed her home with a beautiful 16-hand chestnut horse. I think 16 hands means that's how tall it was. But Lucille knew right away she could train him to be a sensational trick horse. And there's Lucille getting off the train and Papa with that 16 hand horse. That is a pretty horse with a bow on it. That summer, a committee invited Colonel Mulhall and his cowboys to entertain vice presidential candidate Teddy Roosevelt in Oklahoma City. They asked Lucille to show off her roping and riding skills. Mrs. Mulhall shook her head. I don't wish my girls to be tomboys. The committee begged. It was unpatriotic to say no to Vice President Roosevelt. Lucille pleaded. At last, Mrs. Mulhall agreed, but on one condition. It would be Lucille's last experience. In front of 25,000 spectators, Lucille made the most of it. Roosevelt bowed to Lucille and told her she was as good as any of his rough riders. Zach, before that girl dies or gets married or cuts up some other caper, you ought to put her on the stage and let the world see what she can do. She's simply great, Roosevelt insisted. Colonel Mulhall reckoned it was a fine idea and must, Mrs. Mulhall couldn't stop them. Was the world ready for a real girl cowboy? Traveling around the country, Lucille thrilled crowds with her daring acts. From El Paso to St. Louis to New York, newspapers spread the word about Lucille Mulhall, the golden-haired gal who weighed only 90 pounds but can break a bronco, lasso, and brand a steer and shoot a coyote at 50 yards. Some folks thought she was plumb crazy. In other states, women couldn't even vote her own property. She thought they were the crazy ones. I feel sorry for the girls who have to attend so many teas and be indoors so much, she said. Lucille raced against cowboys, rode wild broncos, and performed tricks with governor. She roped five galloping cowboys all at once. Reported, reporters hounded her for interviews. Aren't you afraid your horse will slip and fall, a reporter asked. Oh, I expect that, Lucille answered. I'm not afraid of getting hurt. Lucille preferred her spend her to spend her time roping and riding and performing, not talking about it. When Lucille was 15, she entered her first professional rear steer roping competition. Some people laughed at her, a woman roping and tying 1,200 pound steers. Some made bets against her. No other woman had ever competed against men in a professional steer roping contest. Lucille didn't give a lick about what people thought. Look at, they're all laughing at her. Lucille's going out into the rodeo ring. She's got her split skirt on, and a rope and her cowgirl hat. She is ready to show them guys. She steadied her horse. The steer charged out of the pen. Lucille took off in hot pursuit, swinging her lar lariat. Her first throw landed over the steer's giant horns, but the steer snapped the rope and he escaped. Quick as a jackrabbit, she spun another rope. Whoosh, whoosh, snap. The loop settled around the beast's horns. 
She then, then she flipped him like a flapjack. In a flash, she jumped off her horse, and with two wraps and a hooey, she tried the steer's feet. 29 and a half seconds, faster than any of the men. Soon Lucille broke the world record for steer roping. Cowboys and folks all over the world cheered for the woman who roped and rode better than a man. Other folks still believed Lucille belonged in the home, not on a horse, but her home was always on a horse with the sun on her cheeks, a lariat coiled in her hand, and the boundless Oklahoma prairie rolling out in front of her. And that's the story about the original cowgirl, Lucille Mulholland. Okay, I'm not very much of a cowboy poet, but I wrote a little poem, and you guys will be the first one, guys and gals will be the first ones to hear it. It's called The Chisholm Trail Cowboys and the Cattle Drive. Life's really simple out here on the range when you travel by horseback and hope it don't rain. A cowboy on a cattle drive can't really worry because trust me, those doggies won't get in a hurry. The sun quickly sets as we stoke the campfire. The horses get cared for and the cowboys retire. With bellies full of grub, sleep's come, sleep comes pretty soon with coyotes serenading neath the rising full moon. Up before daybreak, when the sky is still pale, we push cattle north of the old Chisholm Trail. The end. That was fantastic, Larry. <laughs> thank you all for think, letting me read to you. I think Larry's a cowboy poet and he just didn't know it. That's what I think. Oh, shucks, ma'am. Shucks. <laughs> Well, that yeah. was really fun. I hope Thank everybody, you. I hope everybody enjoyed um, the books. They were those are two of my favorite books that we have here. They're they're very fun, fun I stories. Loved it. It was fun. Yeah. Um, so a couple of quick things. Let me say very fast. Um, Saturday, like just a few days from today, July twenty fifth is National Day of the Cowboy, and we're having a special celebration right here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. We'll be open from 10 to 4 with free admission the whole day, and from 10 to 2, we have a lot of really fun activities. We'll have Alan Wooten and the Cowboy Opry Band playing. Una Bell Townsend is going to be here reading books, especially for the Read 'em Cowboy program, and that will be at 11:30 and 1:30. Um, she'll also be autographing books. She's a well-known author. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Exactly. Um, we'll have uh, a cutest cowpoke contest with the winner being announced at one o'clock so you have until 3 p.m on friday july 24th to register go to our facebook page which if you're watching this on facebook live you know how to get there so follow the instructions you'll be able to find that uh, but you have to be present to win um let's see i think there may be some other thing we'll have they'll have snow cones available for purchase mm. out in the parking mm. lot oh i know and we're also going to be doing a leather craft for everyone adults and children alike perfect yeah um i want to say thank you to the oklahoma arts council and the national endowment for the arts for helping sponsor our national day of the cowboy activities Excellent. and you guys will have you can come inside and do all the super fun things that you can do anytime here at the chisholm trail heritage center so uh, be sure and tune in tomorrow for Trail Talk. Martha Berger will be here with her photography and some how-tos and some of her special techniques. So we're pretty excited about that. Larry, you think you might come back and read for us? You again? know, if they, unless I get a lot of complaints from okay, no complaints, audience, no I complaints. think I would be. You we could just, twist my arm. Yeah, we just want. I really up. had a lot of fun. Please come out and visit this museum. It is a tremendous facility. It's, it is a jewel here in southwest Oklahoma, and it's amazing. We'd love to share it and show, show it off. So Ah, thank you. Great you words. Bet. Well, if you uh, want to unmute, and we'll sign off by saying happy trails, okay? So one, two, three, happy trails. Happy trails.